How are you, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends? I am difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before we begin, you can find this podcast show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. This is the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast, keeping it real, uncensored, and shooting straight between the eyes, the third eye that is. I am going to hit you with explicit truth. This solo show is outrageously honest and keenly witty with a view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every day when we wake up from sleeping. We are living life. Well, some of us at least. Let's get something straight. Really, really straight. I am truly, actually, habitually, and shamelessly difficult and demanding. And I completely own it. Now, I don't ask for much because I expect and receive it all. I firmly believe that if you expect shit, you will receive shit. What does that mean? Well, it means expect nothing but the best and don't settle for less. As always, I, your host, Tara, am keeping it real and uncensored. Expectations. Most of us have them. Some are for ourselves and the rest are for others. Do you place your expectation onto others? Does it work for you? People are so worried about being nice. And that is how you rope them into obligations and commitments that they do not want nor need. But a person like me, I can do something that most cannot because I don't give a fuck. I know how to say no. So my people pleasers, it is time for you to make me so happy by diving into episode 69 of the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. Am I enough? Am I good enough? What do they give you that I don't or won't? I don't know if I can make this work with you and your ex-lovers. So we may have to agree to disagree on our approach to reach our true love potential. You want many lovers, but there's only one for me. Which way is the right way? Well, the real question is, what is the right way to love for me? Before I begin, I am going to do a call out. What's a call out? Well, it's not a shout out. I am calling out you motherfucking lurkers. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here and you know I want you here. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, climb aboard and enjoy the entire show because I am giving you plenty of ridiculous honesty. Once the podcast episode ends, I am keeping it going on my Instagram page at Difficult and Demanding and on my Twitter page at Mrs. D and D. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you are well. Are you intrigued about what I'm talking about this week? I try to make it as out of the box, taboo, forbidden as possible, since it's very difficult for people to talk about these things due to judgments, labels, whatever. So that's the shit I like to focus on because I find it fun and intriguing and it keeps things fresh and new. So what am I talking about today? Typically, I tell you the title of the article, but for this one, I am not going to do that. Maybe I'll tell you at the end if I remember. So let's go ahead and get started. This lady with her boyfriend was having lunch and they were having sandwiches and some type of deli. And her new boyfriend said to her, One of my ex-lovers is going to be at the conference I'm attending next week. We'll be sharing a room and sleeping together. (laughs) 
You want me to back up? I can do that. Let me back up for you. There is a lady. She has a new boyfriend. They are having lunch together. They are eating sandwiches, pastrami sandwiches. During lunch, her boyfriend tells her that one of his ex-lovers, ex-lovers, ex-lovers is going to be attending the same conference that he is attending. And he said, we will be sharing a room and sleeping together. What would be your reaction? Well, first, some of you people would probably take that fucking sandwich and like slap, bitch slap them in the face with that shit, right? That's what you want to do. Or you would be having visions of shoving that shit down his throat. <laughs> but other, other people, you would, you would be shocked. You would be stunned. Some of you would be mortified and intrigued, but you don't know what your reaction is going to be in a situation like this. Your boyfriend is telling you point blank, up front, look, you like your sandwich? Is it tasty? Is it good? Great. Guess what? I'm going away. I'm fucking my ex-lover. We're staying in the same, same hotel room. Do you want some fries with that sandwich? <laughs> yes. Do you want fries with that sandwich? What do you say besides, how huh, motherfucker, what? What did you say? Repeat that shit. Yeah, repeat that shit one more time. One more again. If you don't know what one more again means, that, said, that means one more time, tell me again. Street slang, Ebonics. One more again means tell me that one more time. Tell me that again. Another translation, difficult and demanding translation is, what the fuck did you say, motherfucker? Like, what the fuck did you just say? That's what you, that's what I would say or probably have look, you know, the look on my face. That's what he said to her. So she blinked and she kept blinking because she was hoping her eyelids would wash her tears away and to hide her shock. And what she said to him is, I never wanted to know that. And she was thinking that she wished she had stayed home instead of making the 90 minute, 90 minute train trip to see him. She cried. She had tears in her eyes. Why do you think she had tears in her eyes? Do you think she felt not good enough? Why would she cry? Her boyfriend, her lover, is telling her that I'm going away and I'm going to be sleeping with one of my ex-lovers. What do you think is running through his current girlfriend's mind? I'm not good enough. What else could there be, right? On some level, she must feel inadequate, insufficient, that this motherfucker can't even go away for a week without sleeping with someone else. So... Is she not blowing his mind? Is she not bringing it in the bedroom? What is it? Why is it? Why is he doing it? And why is she blinking her tears away? She's sad. She's disappointed for a reason. This motherfucker's unfazed. He is not bothered at all. He's saying this is what it is. At least I'm being honest with you about it. Have another bite of your sandwich. <laughs> yes. What do you do in situations like this? Because clearly she was blindsided. She was blindsided. And he was so skilled, he decided to tell her this shit in a public place instead of telling her in private. It was probably a way to kind of control her outbursts, her reaction, whatever. It was kind of, you know, keeping, keeping a damper on things, keeping things under control. But he feels a need to go sleep with someone else and he's patting himself on the back for being upfront about it. That's his truth. Her truth is, why are you telling me this? I don't need to know this. I don't want to know this. Which sounds like to me, she's saying, if you're going to do it, do it, but don't tell me. But I don't think that's really what she means. I don't think that's what she's implying. I think she feels voided she feels threatened she feels insecure she feels not enough now he's not consoling her 
He's not telling her shit. You're awesome. You're excellent. You're the best. Something wrong. He's not telling her anything, but look, I'm gone. I'm fucking somebody else. I see you when I get back. What do you do with that? Where do you go from that? Clearly before they started this relationship, I'm not thinking this was discussed because it should be handled in a much more delicate manner. He hasn't explained to her why he's doing it, why he needs it, um, what it means as far as safety, her health, safety, his safety, nothing. Just look, I'm your man, but I'm going to be gone next week for a week and I'm sleeping and I'm living in a room and fucking somebody else and I will get to you when I get back. See you, bitch. Come on now. How's that supposed to work? We have these... um. These notions, these belief systems about what a relationship is supposed to be. Friendships, mother, daughter, father, son, romantic. We have these cookie cutter notions about what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to be, and how we're supposed to do it. And then you have folks like this who basically crashes through those boundaries, um, those parameters, and introduces some things that you never expected, you weren't prepared for, and the rug is pulled up underneath your feet. Because typically what people do is either you want to fuck somebody else, you're cheating, you're cheating in secret, or you're cheating blatantly, or you dump a motherfucker and you move on to the next. But that's neither here nor there with this situation. He's just saying, I'm gone for a week. I'm going to be rooming with someone for a week. And while I'm rooming with them, I'm fucking them. And I used to fuck them. But I'll see you when I get back. Now, me, personally, I was like, nah, motherfucker, you won't see shit when you get back. What you're going to see is my black ass heading in the other direction. But that's my personal preference. That's my personal preference. What works for me may not work for somebody else. And let's be clear. I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm just saying it's different. I'm intrigued. I'm curious. And I want to talk about this shit. And I don't know what the hell is going to come out my mouth, which makes it even more fun. Makes it even more fun for me. But this is what he needs to do. This is what he wants to do. And I'm assuming he's doing it because he enjoys it. He wants it. He needs it. And he loves it. But what is she supposed to do while this motherfucker is in another hotel room with someone else? Is she supposed to sit and wait? Huh? What is she supposed to do? They haven't had that discussion. Are they in an open relationship? Do they even have a relationship? What is the shit? What is it? How do you define it? We grow up with all these clear cookie cutter notions about what a relationship should be, how it's supposed to look. Um, what the next steps are, evolution, what the beginning, the middle, the end stage. We have all these things chalked out, written out for us. And then we encounter things and people that tosses that shit into the incinerator and turns it to fucking ashes. What do you do when you could can't put a label on a relationship? What do you do when you don't have any boundaries and no parameter? What the fuck do you do when you don't have a a floor or a goddamn ceiling or any walls? What do you do with a relationship like that? It's nothing and everything at the same goddamn time. It's in your palms, but it's going through your fingers like fucking sand. What do you do with that? That shit's more fluid than me. It's more dynamic than me. I can't wrap my brain or my arms around this goddamn shit. What do you do? And we all have our personality preferences and what we need and what we want. But someone's sitting here telling you, look, I'm your man. You are my woman. But I'm going away to a conference next week and my ex lover is going to be there. We're staying in the same hotel room and we're fucking. It's like, what? hold up, motherfucker. You telling me after the fact. That's the first goddamn problem. You two went ahead and made a motherfucking decision and you're telling me after the fact. So what that says to me, that's fucking major disrespect. That's fucking disrespectful. And then you tell me this punk bitch shit 
in a goddamn restaurant to safeguard, to safe keep your, safe keep your ass. Real motherfucker would told me that at home. Because if you went ahead and made the decision, you booked the room, you had the conversation, y'all came to an agreement and you're telling me after the fact, what that means is that we don't have a relationship. We don't even have a motherfucking friendship. Motherfucker, motherfucker, I don't even know you. Do I know you? I don't know you. So get the fuck out of my face. It's major disrespect. So you want respect for your wishes. You want respect for what the fuck you want to do. You expect to maintain a hold a position in my motherfucking life. And come back to me when you return for your fucking rendezvous, your sex slave rendezvous. You want me to be there and open and, and, and respectful to you. When you just show me blatant bitch ass disrespect by telling me some shit after the fact. Matter of fact, I wasn't even a factor in this shit. You're just telling me, by the way, as a goddamn courtesy. What do you do when someone communicates some information to you as a courtesy and they're looking at you like they're doing you a favor and they, you should pat them on the fucking back because they're being honest? Huh? How's that honesty? That's lopsided fucking honesty. And if it's lopsided, it's not fucking honest because that means there's a lie in that goddamn bitch. Now, if you told me you were pondering this shit beforehand and you wanted to know what I thought and what I felt, mm, that's a different level of respect. That's a different level of compassion, love. That is a relationship. But if someone goes ahead, makes a decision, make the plans, come to an agreement with someone else and tells you over fucking pastrami sandwiches, look, bitch, this is what it is. This is what it's going to be. And I'll see you the fuck you get back. No, motherfucker. I'm going to grab you by your goddamn collar. I'm going to beat you in the fucking head with that fucking pastrami sandwich. But I'm not advocating violence. This is just what's going through my crazy ass head as I'm having like these flash, these rolls, this movie playing in my head of what the fuck I want to do to you. That's what's happening. Now, if you catch me on a bad day, it may actually happen. <laughs> But that's a bitch ass move. How can I respect you? I can't respect you on that shit. That's a bitch punk ass move. You don't like my harshness? I'm gonna call it as I see it. You can't call me your woman and tell me you're being upfront, honest, respectful. And you tell me some shit after the fact. No, motherfucker. You just got fired. There's no trust here. There's no loyalty here. There's no compassion. There's no friendship. There's no motherfucking communication. And you won't be touching me anymore. So don't even come find me. You think I'm being harsh. How am I being harsh? You're fucking someone. He's your boyfriend. You're in a relationship. He's thought about some shit. He's talked to someone else about some shit. They've come to agreement. They've booked the hotel room. They got the dates. They got everything lined the fuck up. The only thing that was left was to tell you. I would say you're not relevant. I would say you're not important. I would say you don't rank as a goddamn priority. So if that's what the signs say, I would bow the fuck out gracefully. Why mess, why mess around with that two-bit fucking fool? No. How people make moves says a lot. It tells you how they feel about you. It tells you how you rank in their life. And it tells you about their goddamn character. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that, hey, he feels the need to fuck somebody else. That's a different topic, which we will get to. But I'm telling you, looking at this shit based off of his actions, I'm telling you, if a motherfucker tells you some shit after the fact, and you supposed to hold some type of significance in their life, what that means is you're nothing to them. So you might as well do yourself a fucking favor bow out with grace and move on bouncing another motherfucker bounce to another motherfucker that's what i said bounce to another motherfucker anybody who's fucking with me you want to tell me some shit like hey i'm gonna be away i've already talked to my ex-lover we've decided to share a room and we're gonna be fucking till the sun comes up but my love i'll see you when we get back mm -mm, i'm gonna put your ass to sleep <laughs> I'm going to put you to fuck. To, so how are you going to do that? I'm going to put you to fuck to sleep. That's what I'm going to do. It's going to be a quick 60 second. You're going to be awake one minute and you're going to be fucking asleep the next. That's what's going to happen. You're not going to disrespect me like that. You can't. You won't. It's not even an option and possibility. And then when you wake the fuck back up, guess what? I'm going to be gone. It's going to be like I never even existed. Poof. This difficult to Manning has disappeared and she's a figment of your imagination and you don't know if you ever knew her, if you met her, or if you ever meet her again. But if you pull some shit like that, she will haunt you for the rest of this life and all your other motherfucking lifetimes. So that's where we are. 
So she says she wished she didn't take the 90 minute train ride to come see him because she didn't want to know this. So then he said to her, look, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I was just being honest. I'm sorry. Eh, lie. I didn't mean to hurt you. Eh, lie. And I was just being honest. Eh, half truth. <laughs> yes. It means motherfuckers lying. It's wrong. It's not true. If you didn't mean to hurt me, you would have told me this shit before you made, before you even talked to your ex, you would have talked to me. You were being honest. Eh, you weren't being honest. You're telling me after the fact, I don't have a choice. I don't have a say in the matter, but you're telling me to try to make it seem like I hold some importance in your life when I really do not because you didn't include me in this decision-making process. I didn't mean to hurt you. Well, you didn't mean to hurt me. How was that? Have we ever discussed when we go on trips that we're going to be fucking other people? No. So you sprung it upon me. Yeah. In a fucking public place. Yeah. At a restaurant. Yeah. And you're not trying to hurt me. No. You play me. You trying to play me like I'm stupid. I'm not stu stu. Stu stu means stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm not stu stu. You're running games. Everything you say you didn't mean to do, you weren't trying to do. That's what the fuck you were actually doing. That's what you were doing. Now, this woman just realized or found out that her man was polyamorous. What does polyamorous mean? It means that you love to, you like to love, have affection, fuck, have sex with other people. You may have a main girl or a main woman, but you like the option, the, the availability to go with others as you please. And you want your main bitch, your main man, whoever to be okay with that. You want them to be okay with that as you explore your sexual needs. I'm trying to figure out what's the point of having the main one. Are they home base? Are they backup? What role do they serve? Are they your friend? Are they your best lover? What is having the main squeeze for? What purpose? So you're never alone? You always have someone to fall back on? What is it? Can you tell me what it is? I really want to know. You got all these bodily fluids going around. And I'm not saying one way is right or the other way is right. One way is wrong. The other way is wrong. I'm trying to understand the complexity behind this. You have your main one. But you want the option to go sleep with other ones. So I'm asking you, why? Is it that one person can't fulfill all your needs? Is it that your needs, you're not sure what they are? What is the reason? Do you believe that we should be with more than one person? What is it? I really want to know because I'm sitting here wrecking my brain trying to understand the chemistry and the connection. We only have so much time in a day. And we all know that relationships are complex and require a lot of work. Communication, compassion, respect. So if you have all these other love affairs how are you maintaining them and not taken away from your main one? How do you keep track? How do you give your all? Do you have all to give? It's exhilarating, it sounds like, but it also sounds like a real strain. Because we as people don't operate in vacuums. No, we don't operate in vacuums. We have feelings. 
When you are intimately involved, you are exchanging a part of yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. You are leaving a part of yourself with another. So if you have all these different lovers, which is perfectly fine, I'm trying to understand what you're gaining, what you're getting from it. Because to me, it sounds depleting on some level. That means the people you are involved with, they're not hitting the spot. Yeah, they're not hitting the spot. You may have sexual attraction and chemistry. There may be some other things going on. But what that tells me is that that motherfucker is not filling you up. They're not leaving you wanting, yearning for them and only them. When you still can purr, go on the prowl for other people, that means the people that you're with, they're not hitting that spot, that deep spot within you, where if another person tries to touch you, you will, your skin will fucking crawl. I'm trying to imagine. And I'm not saying this lifestyle is wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm trying to understand the depth, the, the deepness behind it, the psychological nature behind it. Because how I look at fucking, making love, sex, I look, me, I look at it differently. I look at it at a spiritual level. I look at it as, you know what? If I lay with you, I want to remember that shit. I want it to stay with me until the next time we're together. I want to be able to feel it like it's happening every single time I think about it. And it's not even going on. Where you can feel the touch, the warmth, the lick, the caress, the kiss. You can feel everything, whether that motherfucker's with you or not. And when you have that level of strength, potency, that magnitude, no one can compare to that. There's no replacement. There's no substitute. There's no replica. There's not another motherfucker that can do that shit when you have the right one. When you have many ones, to me, they're not the right one. You need many ones to equal the right one. Because when you have the right one, there is no other one. The right one, there is no other one. No one can feel that, feel, feel that motherfucker's shoes. There's nothing you could do. There's nothing. When that person looks at you, you are ready to go. When they touch you, they are, you are ready to go. When they speak, you are ready to go. When you lay eyes on them, you're ready to go. When you smell that motherfucker, you are ready to go. That means you got the right one. And each time you're together, that shit gets better and better and better and better and better. How many of you guys got that? You don't have it. That's why you need one, another one, another one, and another one. And hopes that all these people you're with will come close to the one, but they do not. We have hearts big enough. To love as many people as possible. Because love is intangible. It's intangible. But we only have one body. And our body is very tangible. And I firmly believe. I personally firmly believe. When you lay with a person. They should enhance your being. Your aura. Your soul. You should feel Bigger, better, brighter, stronger, happier, fulfilled. Because if most people when you lay with, no, they take something from you. And you don't even realize that you're being chipped away slowly. Yes, most people you sleep with, they feed off of you. Which is why you need another one and another one and another one and another one. Because they're depleting you. So every time you go around... Fucking with the wrong ones. You Each one, you guys are just depleting each other, feeding off of each other. I'm not saying polyamory is wrong. I'm not saying it's right. But when you want to get intimate with someone, you want to think about, okay, how did I feel before this person touched me? And how did I feel after I laid with them? 
Because if they do not match, or if you're not better off, you're fucking with the wrong one. If you can't remember the details, like it was seared on your fucking ass and on your soul and your brain at the same goddamn time. If you don't feel it like that, you're fucking with the wrong one. It takes away your potency. Yes, it takes away your potency. You're saying potency. Yes, potency when it comes to sex, fucking, making love, hooking up, whatever you want to call it. You want to be as potent as fucking possible. Potent means strong. Potent means intoxicating. Potent means you laid that motherfucker out each and every time you're with him. Do you do that? You're saying, well, yeah, I come. Yeah, of course you come. But do you come from the inside out, from the core of your goddamn being? Do you goddamn erupt like a fucking volcano? If you don't feel that, where you feel like you have been healed from the inside out, you're fucking with the wrong people. You're confused. You should be. You can have as many lovers you want or you can be extra discerning and choose high quality, high caliber lovers. People who feed your being mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Yes, you want some sex that will blow your motherfucking core open, crack your shit open. You want to have as many connections as possible to a person. You want to be physically attracted to them. You want to be mentally attracted to them. You want to be emotionally attracted to them. And you want to be spiritually attracted to them. Because when you have all those connections, the more connections possible, when you two merge, when you come together intimately, it's like you're trying to become fucking one. You are trying to eat each other's faces and cannibalize each other's body at the same goddamn time. You're trying to merge your shit together completely physically to become one. I'm talking about that level of passion, intensity. No, I'm not talking about lust. I'm talking about passion, desire, where you want to merge your fucking bodies together. But you're saying, yeah, if that's how it is in the beginning. No, 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 no. What I'm talking about is each and every time you're together. You look at each other like, what the fuck was that? That's what I'm talking about. Each time you're together, you turn around, look at each other like, fuck, what the fuck was that? Shit. Can we do it again? <laughs> yes. Can we do it again? And can we do it again? Can we do it again? Can we do it again? You want to lay people the fuck out like you are a goddamn drug. But when you're siphoning yourself out to many lovers, or the wrong people, it takes away your ability to have that impact. Yes, people leave a part of themselves with you. It waters you down, it alters you, it changes the essence of who you are. You see, but me, no, 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 no. Not anyone can touch me. Not anyone can kiss me. Not anyone can be with me. Because if I choose you, I'm going to lay you the fuck out. Each and every goddamn time. I'm going to set your ass up. And I'm going to lay you the fuck out. I'm going to floor you. You're going to look at me like, who the fuck is that? Simple. Who the fuck is that? And when can I get you again? If you don't leave a motherfucking theater trying to catch his breath, trying to find out if his heart is still in his goddamn chest, you are fucking with the wrong one. You want to make a motherfucker feel. You want to make him feel like he is is almost fucking dead. He has died and come the fuck back to life. That's what the fuck you want to do. And you say, how can I do that? I already told you. Discernment. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. You want to connect with the person as many places as possible. Now with most connections, things evolve. They grow apart. You're not synchronized. It's, it's not, there's not harmony. Sex making love, fucking, is supposed to be some potent shit. It's supposed to fucking heal you. Sexual healing, it's supposed to heal you. But a lot of us, we do it like it's a fucking sport. 
We do it like it's drinking a cup of coffee. We don't understand the artistry behind it, the breathing, the technique, the touching, being fully present. Some of us are here, not here. You're not in tune. You have to be in tune. You have to be so in tune. It feels like your, your auras are merged together. You want to be present. You want to captivate, cocoon. You want to be, you want to own that motherfucker while you're there. Own them. Own them through your kiss. Own them through your touch. Own them every step of the way. And the longer you do the four plan dance, you turn up your intensity. You want to cannibalize that son of a bitch so they can think about no other. What do you mean polyamory? No, motherfucker, there's no polyamory. I am she. It is me. You know why? Were you fucking with me? I am polyamory. Let me tell you why. Because I bring what the fuck I feel to the bedroom. Yeah. People think they get bored. It's the same person. This, that, it. No, 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 no. I've told you people before. There's no special mood. There's no perfect mood. There's none of that shit. You feel grumpy and irritable. You bring that shit to the bedroom. You feel playful. You bring that shit to the bedroom. You feel shy and coy. You bring that shit to the bedroom. Bring whatever the fuck you feel to the bedroom. But you let that person know up front. Look, I'm in boss mode today. Lay down, motherfucker, and get ready for me. And push that son of a bitch down and do what the fuck you need to do. You got to let people know up front. You're saying that's too much. No, that's not too much. If you don't want motherfuckers going around looking for other people to have polyamorous relationships with, you need to bring all your different types of emotions and feelings. Bring that shit to the bedroom. Let that person feel it. That requires a certain level of openness, vulnerability, trust, security, and safety. You can't have that with all your different lovers. That's why I said you got to choose the right one. Because if you got the right one, then you can be open. You can expose yourself and be vulnerable. When you have trust, openness, vulnerability, you can show your good, your not so good, your pretty and not so pretty. That is like fucking fireworks in the goddamn bedroom. They don't know who they're going to get. My ass, I fucking shape shift during. You don't know what I can go from this to that to the other. You don't know what the fuck you're going to get. So how can you get bored with that shit? polyamory is because you are fucking bored with who you are with you don't like what the fuck i said i don't give a fuck because it's true that means boredom that means you've been stifled it means you're mundane it means that you are not connected it means you're not open it means there's not a level of trust communication vulnerability that means that shit is lacking so what you do to get that newness, that exhilaration, that titillation, titillation, you go and find new people to be with because you can't be safe, secure, open, non-judge with the motherfucker that you're with. How's that for some realism? How's that for some realism? You're scared to show people who the fuck you are. You know what? If you want to know me, I'll show you me. But you better be the fucking devil itself to see me. You have to be Satan himself to see fucking me because I'm a goddamn she-devil. Did you hear what I said? I am a she-devil. If you're bold enough to see me, I will show you me. But you better be Lucifer himself because you are looking at a goddamn she-devil. You got to know thyself. And you got to find your goddamn counterpart. If you don't have a counterpart, if you don't have your equal, showing yourself, exposing yourself is not going to be something that you're going to be able to do, which is going to stunt and hinder your sex life. People need polar polyamorous relationships because they are bored and they need excitement they need a thrill they need to change they want to be touched differently they want to be kissed differently they want to be licked differently they want to be sticked differently they want to be yanked spanked pulled thrown pushed differently you gotta f what you know I'm direct and I'm honest that's what the fuck people want they want unpredictable so i told you the secret to your success how you feel you bring that to the bedroom and that will give the person the change that they need you're impatient perfect you want to take your time and go slow that's great too bring 
yourself into that bedroom, raw, unfiltered, uncensored, explicit. Can you do that? No. So it's easier to go get many different lovers than it is to find someone to be safe, secure, open, vulnerable with. Yeah. That's what it is. But we're going to proceed. This lady was a widow. And she was with her high school sweetheart for over 32 years until he died. So she decided to dive into the quote unquote cesspool of online dating because she was looking for love. But instead, she found and settled for weird. (laughs) Yes, she found and settled for weird. Her new man, she said, was sweet, smart, and honest. She liked him, but she saw him as an experiment. If she couldn't find Mr. Right, what about Mr. Quasi right now? Augmented with a few others. Uh Aha, what did I tell you? You only need others when you're with the wrong motherfucker. And since we have a hard time being alone, we waste, we siphon off our energy by being with people who are pawns and peasants instead of getting our king and queen that we're worthy of. Because that requires a certain level of patience. I cannot shoot more than one arrow at a time. And being with Mr. Right Now, Mrs. Right Now, Mrs. Quasi Right Now, Mr. Quasi Right Now, that takes away from my effectiveness. I want to be a fucking sniper. You know how long sometimes a sniper will wait for his kill shot? Weeks, days. I'm a fucking sniper. I'm not going to be popping off fucking bullets in the air. I may hit you. I may not hit you. No, I'm, I tell you how I roll. I'm going to sear you. Sear like a fucking piece of meat. I'm going to sear your fucking ass. I'm going to sear your mind. I'm going to sear your heart. I'm going to sear your body. I am going to sear your fucking soul. The saliva you produce will be because of me. You're going to be watering at the fucking mouth for me. You're going to be foaming at the goddamn mouth for me. But you can't have that impact when you're siphoning off, you know, slicing it off for many different people. No. That's why I said you want to save that shit for the right one. The right one. You got to save it for the right one. Because then you got that person coming back looking for you, wanting you, needing you. You change the landscape. You change the game. It makes things so different, so potent, so effective. All you have to do is close your eyes. And it's like it's happening all over again. The tingles, the moans, the groans, the sweat, the hair standing up, all that shit you will feel again. That's only when you're dealing with the right person and the right person you connect with physically. You're attracted to them. Mentally, you're attracted to them. Emotionally, you're attracted to them and spiritually attracted to them. It feels right. It feels perfect all the way around. Can you relate to what I'm saying? I know it's foreign. But you got to think about what I'm saying. A lot of us are involved with people sexually and we feel kind of good while we're doing it. We may come, we may not. But after it's over, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that was nice. All right. What's on TV? I got to go. No. The right one will have you in a fucking stupor for hours and days over and over and over again. Where you can be with no other else. Even if you see someone who's attractive, you don't want that motherfucker. You want the one. You're saying, Tara, you know how long it takes to find the right one? Yeah. But it doesn't take that much time if you weed through the bullshit and you learn how to read your instincts. You can feel your way through shit because at the end of the day, we're fucking to feel good. That's why I'm doing it. Why are you doing it? 
That's the whole, that's the sole point of it. That's the purpose of it. Now they have only been together for a couple of months and they've been spending Saturday nights together with an occasional weeknight thrown in. So somewhere she already suspected that his other nights were reserved for other women, but she really didn't want to know. Why wouldn't you want to know that shit? He's laying with you. You don't know what he's doing with them. You don't know how he's doing it with them and what that means for you. So if you suspected it, why were you scared to know it? If you already knew that he was Mr. Right now, Mr. Quasi right now, why were you hiding from the truth and the facts? You knew what the fuck was up. So that's what I mean. Why people don't know what they want, what they need. And they concoct this picture in their head to make things seem different than what they are. You already knew what he was doing. So the question is, why are you upset? Oh, because he burst your facade. We're grown as people. We need to live in reality. If you know potentially that you with a man and he's not with you, that means he's with somebody else and he's fucking somebody else. So why wouldn't you want to know and be upfront with that about it? Cause then you can go do your thing, right? But here's the funny thing. Both of them were still active online. So what the fuck were they doing? They were pretending to be boyfriend and girlfriend. They were pretending to be upset but now I can understand why he didn't feel the need to tell her anything because technically they weren't really committed to one another. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. They were pretending. They're in denial, concocting some shit that wasn't real. I don't know how that works in polyamory because I believe everyone's supposed to be open, upfront, and honest from the get-go. But who am I to say anything? So they've been seeing other people online. So when he told her about his conference She decided after she blinked away her fake ass fucking tears and reality was brought to the forefront, she decided to share her truth. So the woman who was blinking away her tears decided she has some truth to share also. See what, see what I mean about the games people play? She's upset, but guess what she's getting ready to say to him? I think that you should know that while you are gone, I'll be going on a few, um, first dates. Yeah, she wanted him to know that she was going to be going on some first dates while he was gone. So if that's what's up, why are y'all pretending to be something other than you're not? You're pretending to be this couple, which you're not. You're just fucking and spending time together because you're lonely and you want companionship. But neither one of you are really right for one another. But here's the first thing, or here's the funny thing. She was jealous. She was jealous of his imaginary, well, imaginary for her, but very real for him, ex-lover. She said her first dates, her new first dates that were coming couldn't compare with his announcement that he would be spending multiple nights with someone he already knows. So she's jealous of the fact that these people already have shared history and shared intimacy. She's jealous because yes, she's going out on first dates. But she doesn't have any history, any romance, any type of connection with these people. There's no guarantee that they will make it past a fucking glass of wine. So she feels insecure. She feels jealous by that shit. During the week that he was gone at this conference, she kept picturing him with some faceless woman. I don't know why she got to be faceless. Paint a face on that bitch. Paint him. Imagine her to look like what you want her to look like. She was sitting there imagining her, this faceless woman, and she was imagining their sex, what their sex would be like. She was imagining that it was tender and incendiary, fueled by shared past of synchronized breath and inviolable muscle control. That's a lot of fucking fantasy holding. I mean, what the fuck is this shit? Why are you fantasizing about who he's doing, what the fuck he's doing? If you really want it, you can go get it. The fact is this, you are in a relationship with the dude that you really don't want. You're pretending to have a relationship that's more than what it actually is. And now you are jealous because he is with someone that he was with in the past. And clearly they have more than what the two of you have because they're willing to sleep sleep with each other again, even though they broke the fuck up. Sounds like a motherfucker with some issues. She doesn't know if she's coming or going. She goddamn went. 
Instead of focusing on what the fuck he's doing with someone else, why don't you focus on yourself? Go out on some first dates. Go out on many first dates. Hook up. Go to Tinder. Find somebody. Get what the fuck you want. Why are you imagining him and what he's doing with someone else? If you had a real issue with it, you would have let it be known and let it have been shown when you were having that fucking pastrami sandwich. But since you didn't say it and you acted like it was no big deal and you were acting like you had motherfuckers lined up for fucking days on a, fu- on a fucking football field, you should have been honest. If you didn't like it, you didn't feel uncomfortable, then you should have let him know. And then you should have broke up with his ass or come up with some viable second dates and moved on with your life. You're with the man. He wants to be with other people. So either you choose to be committed to him or you go find some other people to be with. But why waste your time fantasizing about who the fuck he's fucking and the fact that they have history? They have history because they have history. Now, you've been with one person for 32 years and I understand this person's passed away. So you have no history with anyone really because the person you had the history with is gone. I understand that. But all you're doing is driving yourself crazy thinking about who your quote unquote man is fucking. He's not your man. And if you really want to know, shut the fuck up at the hotel. Shit. Go see what's up. Peep through the peephole. If you really want to know what the fuck is going on, go there. You're not going to do that, are you? So if you're not going to do that, let it go. Move the fuck on. Find somebody else. Find some young one. Whatever. Get your needs met. Fantasizing about some faceless woman and what the fuck he's doing to her is not going to get your needs met. It's going to make you fucking cuckoo and crazy. She's focusing on them synchronized breathing and their muscle control. Instead of focusing on someone else's breathing and muscle control, why don't you go find a motherfucker you can breathe with and exercise your muscles with? That's what I would do. So when he returned from his conference, he told her he wanted a primary partner, someone to live with and plan a future together, but there were caveats. So he went off, did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. And when he came back, he saw that this woman was still there. I would say that's some slick shit. You drop a bomb on her, see what she does. You go do what the fuck you want to do for a week. Then you come back and she's still here. So you're saying, you know what? I think I can make her my primary partner. So when my dick ain't working or I don't feel good, I can always have someone there to cuddle up next to. And then when I feel like my dick is up again, then I can go back and do what the fuck I want. It was a setup. He was testing her to see what she does, how she does it, what she says, if she reacts, if she stays, if she motherfucking goes. That's what he was doing. Because why would he come back and ask for a goddamn primary partner? He didn't ask for it up until this point. So why now? So she asked him, what do you mean by um, for you to be in a be polyamorous and be in a relationship? And he said, along with having a primary partner, He need to have a few nights with some former lovers plus one fling a year. (laughs) So he wants to fuck his former partners and have a fling a year, which means he has new former ex lovers. He has a continuous endless supply of motherfuckers to fuck. That's what he wants. And he wants a primary partner. How'd that seem? How'd that sound? Every year he wants to add a new bitch to his goddamn roster, which is an ex, which once he sleeps with the person, that person will become his ex lover. So he has this long roller dicks of roller dicks, roller decks of people that he's fucking, but he wants a primary partner. Oh no, motherfucker. You can't touch me. No, 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 no. You better put on the fucking hazmat suit, wear a goddamn bubble and get the fuck away from me. You can't be touching me. You want a long line of bitches that are your ex-lovers that you can hook up with anytime you please a few nights a week. And then the other night you want to lay with me? Not nah, motherfucker. Nope, 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 nope. Not going to happen. You're not going to put your dirty motherfucking hands on me. If you touch me, you may lose a fucking hand, an arm, or your goddamn body. I don't work that way. I don't want all these other woman fluids on me, near me, anything. No, now I understand that that works for some others. That shit don't work for me. So I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong. And I'm not saying you're right and I'm wrong. I'm just saying different strokes for different folks. But if a motherfucker comes to me and say, look, I want you see, look, I want you to be my primary partner, my main bitch. Yeah, you're going to be my main bitch. 
And on Tuesday and Thursdays, I'm gonna hook up with some other motherfuckers I've been with. And then on Sundays, I'm gonna have my new flings. And then once I fuck my new flings, I'm gonna have another, you know, ex lover added to it. And I just have this big smorgasbord of people that I'm fucking dipping. See, that's how you get fucked up. You gotta choose the right motherfucker to tell this stuff to. Cause if you need a long Rolodex, a football field of goddamn ex lovers, I am not the one for you, clearly, because if I am not the only one that you're hunting the fuck down, I should be the only one that you are stalking and hunting the fuck down. If you're not hunting me, you're not stalking me, then clearly I am not the one for you and you are not the one for me. Now, different people may like this shit. They want one foot in, one foot out, one butt cheek in, one butt cheek out, whatever. I am not the one. I go hard. I go home. I go all in or I get the fuck out. That's how I am because that's what's what works for me. Now I understand that doesn't work for other people. So when you tell me you want me to be your main bitch, your primary partner, I'm thinking to you, Oh, hell no, no, not today. No day, no ever day. It is never going to happen. So what we going to do, what we going to do is you can get the fuck out of my safe face out of my space and we're going to say goodbye and you go find somebody else. One of your ex lovers who is more um, in line with the fuck you're talking about because I ain't she and she ain't me. Is that clear? Good. Don't try that shit with me. It's not going to work. He wants a fling once a year. So she said, why must keeping up with your, why must you keep up with your old lovers? Why must you sleep with your old lovers? Couldn't you just meet them for lunch? <laughs> So she doesn't really want this dude because he's Mr. Right for right now, but she's concerned about the fact that he wants to hook up with his other lovers. Like this is some twisted, convoluted, doesn't make any sense shit. Do you want each other or not? It's clear that both of you are passing time and fucking passing gas and air at the same goddamn time that you really don't want one another. But if all else fails, you have each other. Yes, if you can't find the right one, the main one, then you will deal with this settling motherfucker than being alone and finding some full, full fulfillment. He said, he told her that I've been polyamorous for seven years. He said, I can love more than one person at a time. Part of being poly is being able to realize your full potential. Yes. You know what you're realizing? You're realizing, realizing your full potential of goddamn bullshit. Now you're saying, Tara, are you saying that we all have to be in a monogamous one-on-one -on -one relationship? No, that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying there are different types of relationship structures for different people. That is what I believe. I also believe that if I'm going to have a relationship with people, I have to have a strong spiritual connection to you, which means you need to be a soulmate, a twin soul, something like that. Like we have to be deep, like deep. This can't be some random motherfucker that I'm attracted to. I think I like, no, we have to have a deep connection and finding soulmates and things like that. That's very hard to find. That's where you get that deep level of intimacy from. But some people don't like to go that deep. They like to keep that shit skin deep. I like to go to the bone and some people like to keep it skin, skin deep. And that's okay too. But what works for me is not going to work for you. I do not want to be contaminated with other people's energy, fluids, whatever. I don't want other people's sexual energy on me. Now you're saying, well, haven't you slept with other people? Don't you have a past? We all have a past. But as far as I'm concerned, my past say the fuck of my past. If I, if I quit fucking with you, then I'm not going to fuck with you now because I left your bitch ass for a fucking reason. And I don't give a fuck how good the sex is. It wasn't good enough to keep me with your ass. So why the fuck would I go back to you? One, two, when you're sleeping with people, they stay with you. So if you don't know the fuckers that you're lying with, their energy, their issues, all that shit, they leave a portion of that shit with you. They imprint themselves on you. That's why I don't let any motherfucker come touch me and be with me because I don't want your baggage. I don't want your shit. Keep your shit with you and I will keep mine with mine. So if I choose to intertwine myself with you romantically, sexually, shit gotta work. Shit got to match. Shit has to flow. It has to flow on many different levels. When you're fucking, literally fucking the wrong person, 
You don't connect mentally. You don't connect spiritually. You don't, you just not connecting. Shit, it's not clicking. That is not a fulfilling sexual experience. You might as well be sitting on the fucking corner, passing gas and sucking on your thumb. It's not a fulfilling. It's not fulfilling. You're just doing it to do the shit. You're doing it for some short term, quick fix gratification. But sex fucking that's supposed to be for healing. It's supposed to make you feel so much better and not while you're doing it and not up to five minutes after you fucking come. It's supposed to be with you for days. And if that experience does not last, if that experience doesn't build you up, if that experience you can barely remember, then that probably you shouldn't have been doing. You've been doing the wrong motherfucker. You got to find the right people to hook up with. We get intoxicated and use all these things that impair our judgment. And all we're doing, we're fucking with our potency. People can tell when your aura, your chemistry is is strong. It is um, unwavering. It is intoxicating. It is charismatic. They can feel that. And that pulls people to you. But if you're too busy off making it rain, making it rain means, you know, you're in a strip club and you're throwing a whole bunch of money. What you're doing is you're making it rain with yourself. You're sharing a little piece of yourself here, sharing a little piece of yourself here, sharing a little piece of yourself here. After a while, there will be nothing left of you. There'll be nothing left of you. Then what do you have to give? But I'm not saying my way is the only way. I'm not saying my way is the right way. I'm just saying this is how I live my life. And this is the results that I produce for my life. Unlike others, you won't forget me. You will remember me. You will know me. You will find me. And if you don't know who the fuck I am, you will go to somebody who does and you will get that shit. That's how I live life. I live life to be unforgettable on every single goddamn level way. Unforgettable. I don't want to blend in. I want to stand the fuck out. So everything I do, my goal is to stand the fuck out. Who was that? That's difficult and demanding. Who? That's difficult and demanding. Are you going to forget someone says I'm difficult and demanding? No, you're going to remember that shit because that's what I do. That's how I roll. And you have to figure out your signature experience, your signature sexual experience. But let me tell you this. Even if you choose to have many lovers, you are leaving a piece of yourself with that person. Now, if you choose the right person that you connect with spiritually and on other levels, you don't leave any portion of yourself behind. You guys actually up, uplift and enhance one another. It's when you're messing with fucking pawns and peasants, people who are not worthy of you. That is when they suck you dry like a goddamn vampire. So she says, why is your potential tied up with sex? She said, you know, it is dangerous because you can emotionally become dangerous. It's emotionally dangerous because you could Fall in love, fall for the person that you're hooking up with, the person that you're having your little one-off rendezvous. It's emotionally damaging. Someone could potentially get hurt. You could fall in love with your fling. And then where the fuck does that leave me? Your main squeeze has now been kicked to the fucking curve because you have fallen in love with your fling. And then she said, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of pussyfoot and playing with this guy. I'm sick of being in denial. I'm going to tell him what it is. She turned around and told him, look, motherfucker, you are my fling. She told him, you are my fling. I'm sick of trying to pretend that you are some Mr. Right when your ass is all wrong. You are my fling. And she said, eventually, I will meet someone like me and this shit that we got going on will end. Now, what's the moral of all this? One, know yourself. Know yourself. Know what you need, know what you want, know when, how, where you could possibly get it. Know yourself. Because when you know yourself, meaning you're not a very deep person, you don't like to go that deep. Maybe having many different partners is right up your alley. Let's say you like to go really, really deep with people, but maybe you can't go one too deep with one person. Then you split your deepness with a few other people. Or let's say you're a person where, you know what, you like to go hard, you like to go deep, but you like to go with one person. Then you do that. What we have to do is see how relationships are not clean, cookie cutter, like we are told or taught they should be or could be. Circumstances 
environments, people, lifestyle choices, all that will hinder and thwart your relationship, what it looks like, what it can be, what it will be. So then it boils down to, is this something I really want? Can I compromise on these things? I really like this person. So am I willing to be compromising and understanding and let them sleep with other people, their ex lovers and have a fling a year? Is that right for me? Is that okay for me? Because if it's not, then you have to say goodbye. And you know up front whether something works for you or not. You know. So don't be in denial about it. Am I advocating polyamory? No. Only if it works for you. Am I advocating monogamy? No. Only if it works for you. You got to be the choice on that. But whatever you choose to do, you need to understand the reasons behind why you're choosing what you're choosing to do. Don't go forward with some shit like this blindly. No. Know it. Own it. Do it. Know what you're doing. It. Know what you're doing. Own what the fuck you're doing. It. Own what you're going to do. And do that shit. Know what you're doing and why. Own the fact that you are going to do it. And then do that shit. And have no remorse and no goddamn regrets. Don't let people play word games, word play with you. Know yourself, know what works and honor thyself. Just because polyamory doesn't work for me, doesn't mean it cannot work for you. You have to set the rules and parameters of how you want to live your life. But let me tell you this. If one of y'all motherfuckers come to me, tell me some shit like this over a pastrami sandwich, you better hope your mouth is big enough to fit that whole fucking sandwich in. Because I swear to God, I'm going to shove it to the back of your fucking throat. And I'm going to kick you in the ass and bitch slap you out of my face. You got to know who you're fucking with too. You just can't be doing this shit to any random person because you can get fucked up. You tell the wrong person that you're in a relationship with that you want to go sleep with your ex and you're going to a conference, you're going to be there. You may find yourself hanging up on the wall like a pair of fucking deer antlers. <laughs> Simple as that. But that's why difficult and demanding is a rare treat. You got to find the right motherfucker to pull this shit with. I am not she. She is not me. I'm a different animal. So you got to know the beast that you're dealing with and approach it accordingly. So if you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. I will see you back here next week. Do you, be you, and be true to you. Bye. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and let me know what you think about this episode and my podcast. You can try and slide into my DM, but I will kick your ass out. So I suggest you hop into my DM on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding or Twitter at Mrs. D and D or leave a comment on one of my posts. I'm so pleased. Thanks to you. I am truly happy to know that appeasing others is really important to you. I have a lot of demands and expectations. As such, I expect you to return to me for episode 70, which is here on March 22nd, 2019 from the I'm Difficult and Demanding podcast. 